Hey Internet, this is Gary. I am a contestant in a contest that's being run by the DFW Nerd Nighters. Uh, the contest involves designing a game uh, that only uses components from this little box from Panda GM. The design that I'm working on is called Haunted Bits, and let me show you how it plays. Here is the game. We open this up. We'll find a little bag of bits, all haunted of course, and we've also got 70 cards in here. So the first two cards are the PKE meter. This will track the psychokinetic energy as the game plays out. Starts at zero, goes up to nine, and then just circles back around through zero. We've also got 20 cards uh, that are exorcism cards. This is what we're trying to collect. We're trying to exercise the spirits from these haunted bits. And that is done by arranging them into different combinations. So there will always be three of these exorcism patterns available at any time. We'll draw the first three here. And then to help you understand what these patterns might look like, let's take a look at the bits. There's two that are a little special, and we'll talk about them in just a minute. But the rest of these bits uh, can be organized in two ways, either by color or by shape. And you'll see that each of the exorcism cards have icons referencing either the shape or the color of the bits uh, in this game. So here are the five blue bits. Here are the four yellow bits, the two coins and the two dice. And then we've got three red bits. So five, four, and three for the different colors. And then we've also got five, four, and three for different shapes. We've got five cubes or boxes. We've got four disc shapes. And we've got three crystal shapes. So the cards can reference either the shape or the color. Now you're probably wondering how we arrange these to match these different patterns score these points to win the game. Uh, and that's done through card play. So I'll deal out three cards to each player. And then before we can start playing any of these cards, uh, there's one last step to set up. We need to roll these dice. If there are any pandas, we'd re-roll them. And then the sum of these dice is going to indicate the psychokinetic flux level. So we're going to put this gold brick on the nine. And that's going to indicate a kind of a sweet spot if we can get the flux or the PKE tracker here to land on nine, uh, we'll get to take an extra turn. It'll start on zero and then ever, as ghosts are uh, summoned, uh, bits are brought into play, then this will go up. You'll see how that works in just a minute. So the player with the most ghost busting experience goes first. Uh, they're going to pick one of the cards from their hand to play. And then what you'll see is almost all of these, well, all of these cards have a, a PKE level. That's kind of their rank. And then they also have a type of bit that they are inhabiting. So this is a spirit that can be in any of the three red bits. So we can choose which of the three red bits we might want to bring into play here. I'll choose the red disc. And then the PKE level is how much we're going to move this tracker up. We started at zero, so we'll move it up to six and draw a new card. And that will be the end of our first turn. The second player is going <clears> to <throat> take a turn in a similar way. However, you're always restricted. You have to play cards with a rank that's higher than, greater than, or equal to the PKE level. So I have to play something that's a six or higher right now. So I'll play this nine. I'll use the crystal. I could choose any blue piece there, but I'll use the crystal uh, for that spirit. And then I will draw a new card, make sure that I don't forget to add 9 on the spirit track. We're at 6, and 6 plus 9 is 15. So since there's 10 spots in the circle here, we'll land on 5 before it becomes the next player's turn. So uh, it's 5. We have to play something 5 or higher. And again, we're trying to match these patterns of cards at the top. We're pretty close to this pattern. In fact, I can complete that one by playing this uh, yellow card. Uh, this is going to be any yellow bit. And actually what I'll show you now is uh, that when you uh, use a play a card that <clears throat> is in, in uh, haunting a die, you get to re-roll that die. So I'll re-roll this. If you roll a panda, you can actually set that to any number you want. So for instance, I might set this to 1. Now 1 plus 4 is the new flux level. The new flux level is 5. Unfortunately, I'm just leaving this spot. I still have to move 6 positions around the board here. Uh, so the new PKE level is 1. 
Uh, but the good news for me is that I have matched this uh, pattern. We've got a, a disc followed by a blue piece followed by a yellow piece. So I'll take this exorcism card as my first exorcism. I'll draw a new one. And then we'll just want to make sure that this pattern isn't already matched. If it is, we'll discard it and redraw a new one. This one's not matched by uh, what's on the board. So it'll be the second player's turn now. So they're going to look through their cards. And uh, we have to play one or higher, so we're not too restricted. I think I'm going to play this uh, four that can in, uh, haunt a crystal. We've got two crystals over here we could use, but I'd also like to show you that you can take a piece that's already in the queue, uh, and then what will happen is the spirit that was on that piece is just going to go into the discard pile, and we'll slide uh, each of the remaining spirits down to fill up that hole. So that's kind of a nice way, a little bit more sneaky way, to get these pieces into the combinations that you need uh, to perform an exorcism. I'm not sure that I've quite matched any patterns uh, just yet, uh, but let's move the PK level up to 5. Uh, we happen to be on the flux marker, so we get to actually go again. And uh, I'd like to actually take this opportunity to just suggest, you know, if, if I had some, didn't have a card that was five or higher, uh, what I might need to do is channel some ghost energy, some spirit energy for my next turn. So what I'll do is I'll play down my spirit in front of me. This is just a weakling little two here. I'll play that down in front of me and draw a card for my turn. And then what will happen is next turn, I get to add that two to the card that I play from my hand as my effective uh, PKE level. So I'll be a little bit more likely that I can take my turn on the next round. So uh, this player is going to take their turn. They're going to play uh, this 8. Uh, they'll bring in the blue disc. Still haven't quite matched. Almost have that pattern, but not quite. And we'll come back to this player. And they luckily drew a card that uh, I can now show you the last kind of variation on what might happen on your turn. So all the 1 through 9 ranked spirit cards have a piece that they inhabit. Uh, the 10s are a little bit different. They look like this, and there's no icon for a specific type of piece they can haunt. Instead, they're going to disperse some of the spirits in the queue. So we'll go ahead and play this immediately to the discard pile, and then we can take any two adjacent uh, pieces from the queue, from the line here, and take their pieces off and move them to the discard pile. Again, all the remaining spirits and bits will slide down to fill in any holes. And if you play at the right time, you're likely to uh, complete one of these exorcism patterns. So again, you keep playing until you've got uh, five, the first to five wins, and that's Haunted Bits. Uh, this is, again, designed for the DFW Nerd Nighters uh, game design contest. It's been a blast to be a part of it. Uh, thanks to everybody who had anything to do with organizing or sponsoring or participating in this contest. Uh, it's been great to kind of get to meet and know each of you a little bit uh, through the forums and through the different communications here. Uh, it's been a blast. I hope you enjoyed the game and I'll be in touch. Thanks.